who in here thought that pirates, space, or aliens were kind of cool when they were kids? I know I did, and I still love space. So today I'm going to talk to you about the various ways that radio frequency engineering contributes to the space industry. You see, in addition to being a senior in electrical engineering, I interned for a summer at a startup company that's pioneering new methods of RF technology in their small set. And I've been hired as a radio frequency and antenna design engineer post-graduation. In this talk, I'll tell you how RF engineers are helping catch pirates from space, giving us iconic photos of our planet, and helping with the search for intelligent life. But first, how to catch a pirate. Advances in radio frequency software are helping catch pirates and other bad guys from space. As I said earlier, I interned for a startup Hawkeye 360, who will be using software to find radio in their satellites to geolocate radio signals here on Earth. Software to find radio just means that instead of using hardware in a traditional radio, the same goal is achieved with blocks of software or code, which can be more easily updated remotely. The ability to triangulate a radio signal can help locate so-called dark ships, ships that turn off their GPS transponders when they're committing illegal activity like smuggling or illegal fishing. Hawkeye hopes to help curb what CEO John Serafini said in a Business Insider article last November is $3 trillion worth of illegal fishing, smuggling, drug trafficking, and piracy each year. Not only that, advances in RF hardware can help us go further than ever before. NASA launched the twin Voyager spacecraft in 1977. And per their website, they're still the world's farthest and longest lived spacecraft. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Voyager 1 took the famous pale blue dot photo, known as the first ever portrait of our solar system, four billion miles from Earth. And it's still the most long distance view of our home planet that we have. In a 2013 Wired article titled Interstellar Atrex, how Voyager's vintage tech keeps running, Journalist Mann stated that Voyager 1 has a 22.4 watt transmitter, nothing like you'd see in your refrigerator light bulb. But by the time its beacon reaches us, the signal is 0.1 billion billionth of a watt. And NASA has to use its largest radio dish, a 70 meter dish, just to hear the signal. And speaking of giant radio dishes, RF engineers with radio astronomy are helping with the search for extraterrestrial life. The SETI Institute was founded in 1984. SETI, spelled S-E-T-I, is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. According to their website, SETI Institute's first project was to conduct a search for narrow band radio transmissions that would betray the existence of technically competent beings elsewhere in the galaxy. They go on to say that they're using the Allen Telescope Array to also search for red dwarf stars and investigate newly discovered exoplanets all while trying to answer the age-old question of whether or not we're alone in the universe. So let's review. Today I told you how RF engineers can catch pirates, take long distance photos, and look for aliens. I hope now you can all understand some of the ways that radio frequency engineering contributes to the space industry. In closing, I think Bliley Technology put it best in a 2017 blog post when they said, quote, without RF engineers, there is no human activity in space.